everyone. My name is Shakira. I am the creator behind Dark Arts Craftopedia. And today I will be taking over Nicole Moret's channel. Um, don't know. Let me see. Okay. So today what we're going to be doing is, um, if you don't know my art, I am a 3D artist. I'm also a Tumblr maker. And um, I make the the donut tumblers. Um, I'm also known for making all kinds of 3D art. I make faces and I make a lot of other, um, a lot of other uh, 3D tumblers, but I use polymer clay. So the reason why I'm here, hi Cheryl. <laughs> the reason why I'm here is, um, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use Nicole Moretz or NMO's pigment powders for your clay work. Um, today we're gonna to be using Bogart and Gable. There are some of her classics. If you guys have, <laughs> I'm so glad that you're here. I, if you've been following Nicole for a while, you probably know, hi Diane. If you've been following Nicole for a while, you probably know or are familiar with um, her classics, which are some of these. These are really gorgeous gold colors. Um, Bogart is almost like a like a, a solid gold, and Gable has a little bit more of like those bronze tones. And um, for tonight. I'm so excited that you're here. And for tonight, I have made um, Lumiere. So we will be painting Lumiere. I'm also gonna teach you guys how to use the pigment powders, the different pigment powders, for little things like making flowers. Um, the powders are a great way to pigment your clay and um, especially when it's raw. So, hi Karen. So, um, what we're gonna be doing, this is a raw piece. It still has to be baked. The only thing that's baked is his head. So what we're gonna be doing is going ahead and pigmenting him with the powder. Um, because of the texture of the clay, of the raw clay, the powder goes straight in and you guys are gonna see just how pigmented they are and how we can create all kinds of shadowing and all kinds of highlights just using the pigment powders. So let me go ahead and change you guys so that you guys can see my hands and you guys get a more of a bird's eye. Hold on. So this is what we're gonna be working with. And here are the two pigment powders that we're gonna be using today. And as I said, Lumiere is basically, he's gonna be, he is, um, he is raw clay, it's not baked. The only thing that's baked is his head. So let me just go ahead and see if I can find us here on our, on the channel so that I can see comments. I want to be able to reply in case you guys have any questions or anything. Okay, I can see you guys now. So we're gonna go ahead. Let me let me show you the, the powders before. So this is Gable. And it's a really pretty copper color. And then we have Bogart, which is a really nice and solid gold. And if you guys have seen Beauty and the Beast, you know that uh, Lumiere is a gold tone, but he does have a little bit of shadowing here and there. So what we're gonna be doing with a clean brush, we're just gonna go ahead and start coloring him. Remember, he is on a raw tumbler because he's still gonna be baked. But as you guys can see, right away you can see how the product actually colors the clay now what i want to start what i want to do is add depth 
So I'm gonna go add the gold right where the where the lighting would hit him in a natural way, not in the crevices. And then I'll come back and and color him with a little bit of Bogart so that it has a little bit of that rust into the shadow areas. See how the, the powder actually creates a really pretty color. It's very shimmery. And it would be hard to create this kind of color with paint alone. You would need a lot of coats to get it this pigmented. And as you can see, it takes very little of the powder and you can completely get him into the tones that you're looking for. So we're gonna go ahead and move him here just a tiny bit so you guys can see more. And I wanna, I wanna get him as pigmented as possible, but I do wanna come back and do a little bit of shadow with our bronze tone. So, so here's Gable. Let me, you need just a tiny little bit as you can see. And I'm gonna go ahead and add Gable onto the crevices to create that shadow effect. Now this piece will be under resin just because he will be on a tumbler. So I do need to completely cover him. And if you don't make any kind of shadow or anything like that, all the details would be lost. So using the NMO pigment powders is one of my favorite ways. Sorry guys, <laughs> I'm paying attention over here. It's one of my favorite ways to add that dimension to it. And we're just using two pigment powders and as you guys can see, you can see how he starts to look a little bit rusted around the edges, but still shimmery where the light would hit him. Oops. So I'm just creating that shadow with the darker tone. And you can see right away the difference this product makes. There is no paint added. It is just the pigment powders. And all you need is a little bit because the texture of the clay will soak it in. You do have to be a little bit careful just because it's raw clay, so it's not completely solid. That one's completely solid. This one's not. So let's go ahead and give him some texture over here, a little bit of a shadow so that he looks rusted like you would find something like this anywhere else. These are actually on the website now. These are from, um, these are the classics. It's Bogart and Gable. Um, these are in stock right now. And um, these are some of my favorites actually. If you guys have seen my work, I did a honey jar and on the drip, I actually used Bogart. Um, you can, there. it's a very versatile, product that you can actually use inside your your resin mix so i add um, a little bit of the pigment powders to my to my drips on my cups and it's what makes it look with the depth um and these two are the ones that i'm using so you guys can 
can find them on the website. Um, these are my favorite, <laughs> my favorite for gold tones. Um, or when I'm doing something that looks a little bit rusted, that I want it to have that shimmer, but that it also looks a little bit antique. These are beautiful products. You use very little, as you guys can see. I barely touch it, and a little bit goes a long way. Let's go ahead and do his body. So, the technique that I'm using is just shadowing um, the edges with the darker tone, and then we're gonna we're using the lighter tone on where the light would naturally reflect. So this makes our piece, even though it's already 3D, it gives it that dimension so that it doesn't look flat, especially under epoxy. Oh, Cheryl's gonna go ahead and load them right now. So, yes, Sandy, these give such a great coverage. I love using these. These are one of my favorites, and I'll show you in just a little bit. Um, my drips, especially on my darker cups, I like to use the pigment powders. It's like a little, a little secret. <laughs> one of well, one of my one of my secrets to making my cups a little bit more moody, like my Wednesday Adams one. Um, I don't use uh, any paint on the drips. All I use is the pigment powders. And the reason why is because it just gives it a lot more like that dramatic effect that you would want on, on a 3D piece or on a cup like Wednesday, something that you want a little bit more moody. And as you guys can see, it's so easy to use. Um, this clay is raw. So remember, just before you stick it in the oven, go ahead and and color it, and then you can stick it in the oven, and it'll be done. And I'll show you a piece that I already baked with uh, pigment powders and how pretty and how rich the colors actually look once baked. They do not lose any of the shimmer or the shine. It does look like real metal. <laughs> <laughs> and this is one, just one, okay? I'm still using just Bogart. Um, this is the only arm that I've used Gable on. So let me go ahead and finish this part, and then I'm going to show you guys how once it's shadowed and we put in that rust, it just looks so beautiful. And to be honest, it's the little details of the products that you use that will set your art apart. And this is one of my favorites. See how it shimmers and it brings those little details to life. What kind of clay? This is Sculpey. Um, the one on top is original Sculpey and the one on the bottom is uh, super Sculpey. So this one is a little bit um, of a harder clay. Um, it's more firm and it doesn't hold your fingerprint where this one does hold your fingerprint. It's a little bit softer. Uh, but when I do ha when I do faces, um, I like to use the softer clay just because I like to get all those creases and his smile and his teeth, <laughs> all of that. Mm. Now his, his, his head is not, um, is not painted yet. This is the raw clay, um, just straight out of the oven. Um, it's okay if it falls into the piece because we're gonna go ahead and do a white coat on it. And then on top of him, on top of his face, I'm gonna go ahead and be using uh, pigment paste number 13. Um, this one, even though it looks white, I hope, I hope on camera you guys can see the shimmer. It has a very pretty gold shimmer and um, it's one of those one of those products that actually, when you take pictures of it, it might not look, it might not translate into your picture, 
but whenever your client gets hit their piece or their cup, um, they start to look at all the details that you actually added into it. So, okay, so we've done all of the light areas. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in with Gable with just a little bit, you guys saw, I grabbed just a tiny little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and do all the little crevices. And don't worry if it falls on the cup. Once the piece is baked, you can just transfer it on to your actual cup. So just on the crevices. And because the light has already been done, as you guys can see, it's just really sticking to the crevices. Just a tiny little bit. Just want it to look and that you can actually see all the details. Because once you put epoxy over um, sculpted pieces, if you're not careful in your pigment process, it will eat all your details. So go ahead and give it that shadowing. See how it looks different right there? Want you guys to be able to see the difference. I love 3D tumblers. I did a gnome and it came out so cute. I'm proud of it. Oh, I love that. It's still unfinished. Well, if it's still unfinished, you can still use your products. These products are amazing. And I'm using right now gold metallic tones, but the really cool thing about NMO products is that they have them in so many tones. Let me show you. So for my Wednesday cup, um, there's this one and it's called Russian Violet. And it's this really pretty deep purple. And it looks just like that on clay. Um, if you add it to your epoxy as an additive, um, if you use it for drips, it's actually, you're gonna be able to see dimension. You'll see how it drips. Um, let me show you. This one is also one of my favorites. It's called a brunette. And with this one, I actually, it looks really dark, but once you add it to one of your clay pieces, it actually looks antique, as you guys can see. So as you guys see, once again, it's a dual tone. I put the base of brunette because I wanted it darker. And then you just go ahead and add anything else. You can add one of these. You can even add one of the NMO inks. And it just gives it a lot more to your piece. So let's go ahead and finish this guy. I love this part. I love I love this part of the process. Um, painting is, I think, my favorite because that's when you actually see them come to life. So we're gonna go ahead and stay away from the top part. We're just doing the darker tone, the rustic, the, the more uh, bronze tone over to the edges so that it gives it that antique look. Yes, Jalen, you need to get these pigments, especially for all your artwork. You're gonna love them. And I wish, I don't know if you guys can see, it has like those brush strokes on it that make it look antique and the really cool part is that once you bake it it sticks you don't have to seal it or anything like that it just sticks the only thing you have to be careful is that your piece is not baked so it's still kind of fragile all you have to do is just give it very soft handed strokes, but you can get it. 
and it gives it such a really pretty glow. I'm adding a little bit of the lighter tone here and then a little bit of the darker to the sides so it gives it that shadow that I want. And once he's completely done, I'll be working on him this week with epoxy and all of that. Once he's completely done, I'll make sure to update you guys um, and I'll be posting him and send pictures to Nicole so she can post and you guys can see him under epoxy. They change a whole lot under epoxy. He looks a Gemma. Hi there. He does. Hi. He changes so much. And it's just the way that you powder and how you give it that darker tone in the little crevices that will really make him pop. As you guys can see, he now looks more like Lumiere than when we first started. <laughs> it's really simple and uh, fun. It's a really fun product to use and really relaxing. I, I truly enjoy this part of the process. Um, and these pigments are one of my favorites to use on clay work because they're so easy. There's not a lot of mess, not like with paint that you would have to do two or three coats and then come back and do the shadowing. You do it all at once. Just have to be careful. Hi, Janine. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm pretty sure that this live is going to be saved. So all we're doing is here um, pigmenting. I was going to say painting, but it's actually pigmenting <laughs> our Lumiere. So if you guys barely came in, all of Lumiere's body was this color right here. And what we're doing is we're um, using the NMO pigments. Um, we're using Bogart as our lighter shade and Gable as our bronze, kind of like our toner. <laughs> like if you were doing a little bit of... Um... Hi, guys. Hi guys, <laughs> sorry, the internet is super faulty. We're having a little bit of storms and it's in and out, but um, I'm still here. <laughs> Let me turn you guys back over. It's just making sure, cause I saw that on my computer. Lost you guys. So here we are. Okay guys, so if you're barely turning in, we're, um, we are pigmenting. This clay piece, it is a raw clay piece. And hi, Fernando, how are you? Perlita, how are you? So what we're doing is using uh, Bogart and Gable. They are the iconic uh, pigment powders. And they are on the site right now. Um, I am using Bogart the uh, all of the people which is gable um we're doing all of the all of the little crevices so that way we can shadowing and as you guys can see this product is really easy to use on clay on raw clay 
and we did all of his body <laughs> in a matter of a few minutes. And not only did we did it, do him in just one go, because we didn't have to do a second coat or anything like that, which we would have had to do with paint, we're actually also doing the shadowing. And on 3D tumblers or pieces, art pieces that you actually use epoxy over, um, he will be on a 3D on a tumbler, so he needs to have epoxy over him. You usually you you usually lose all of the all of the little details. So it is really important that you give. Sorry, I keep losing you guys. We have a pretty bad storm right now. So, we're still here. We're working on, right now what we're using is Gable. My grand you could, are going to do powder here. Um, if you pigmented it with this, it would look really pretty. Let me show you. It's a really soft pink and it shimmers really, really pretty. I'm sorry, guys. My, my keeps, it keeps, um, dropping me it's just that we've been having like really bad weather um and i had somebody come out today to make sure that this didn't happen but unfortunately we're we still have that storm so here we go guys almost done No, don't worry. I'm happy that you made it. This live will be saved so you guys can always come back to it. You guys can see how I did it and what pigment powders I used. Today we only used two, as you guys can see. The only thing that I'm doing is making sure that I got all the crevices Oh, thank you, Cheryl. I was really hoping that today we were going to have, well, tonight we were going to have a better internet service than we've had all day since yesterday. So here it is. And as you guys can see, Bogart really shines on top, but then on the edges, you get to see Gable. On the base, you see it a whole lot more. And then this guy is pretty much done and ready for the oven. So he goes in the oven for an hour, just because of these parts that are thicker. Um, 275, and once he comes out, he's ready. He's already shadowed, he's already done. Then I would I will start working on his face. Now, the other little thing that I wanted to show you guys. 
is. So these are the ones that we used. And I want, I'm gonna grab a little bit here of my polymer clay. This one is um, Sculpey Original. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a tiny little, little ball of it. And we're gonna go ahead, hola. <laughs> Oh, no, no, don't worry. <laughs> so what I'm doing, what I'm going to be doing here is showing you guys how you guys can make stupid question because I'm so intimidated by 3D. After you bake it, then you paint and glitter the rest of the cup. Yes. When you bake him, um, he pops off. Um, all you have to do is a little bit of wiggle and it pops off and then usually I have these cups where I bake them and then I just transfer it over to the cup that he's actually going to go on. So what we're going to be using right now and don't be scared of 3D. 3D is a lot of fun. So all I have is a little ball of clay here um um is from from the bakery section in any store in like the craft stores and what i do basically so i can show you guys so there it is it comes out like this and all you have to do is gently pull it out little by little so this would be your flower and as you guys can see it was just a tiny piece of clay so with this flower we're gonna go ahead and use uh, Russian violet this one's on the site right now and you're just gonna grab Russian violet a clean, um, a clean brush. And just dab it in. And you can see right away how you can, how it, how it does and it pigments right away. See how it gives it that color. And once again, use shadowing so go ahead and use your darker color and then come in with a lighter tone. It's so pretty, right, Cheryl? I love it, I love it. Especially on drips, it looks so pretty. So, I'm gonna go ahead and use Tempura, and it's a really pretty shimmery pink. This is part of the pink palettes. And with a new, new brush, just so that you don't get it contaminated, you're gonna go ahead and do the edging. So that Hi, Mandy, you made it. Happy anniversary. Okay, guys, so 
I moved the camera a little bit. Let's see if we get a little bit more reception. So let me show you what we did. See how the Russian violet gave it that deep, rich tone? And then the pink one gave it that really pretty shimmer on the edges. And in the center, all you have to use really, you could use just like once it's baked, all you can, all you need is um, just a little dab of um, one of the NMO inks and that's it. Let me, let me show you guys one that's already been baked and, um, and it's been under epoxy. I have it right over here. Hold on. Trying to find them. Oh, they're over here. Let me show you guys. So, already baked and under epoxy, they usually tend to lose a lot of their, yeah, uh, they usually tend to lose a lot of their details. But these, as you guys can see, they don't. And this already has epoxy on it. So this can go straight onto a tumbler, as you guys can see, right there. And it really depends on your coloring. So you can add a bunch of more detail to them. Um, the other thing that I like to use, um, like the way uh, Lumiere, the way we, we did Lumiere, um, I did this little guy from Alice in Wonderland. And under epoxy, they don't really lose the detail. With this one, I actually used um, the NMO ink that's called the Deuce. And the same as Gable, it's kind of like in the same line. Um, it's more of a bronze tone. So I added it to all the details and it really like made it pop. And this is already under epoxy, under like three coats of epoxy. And you don't lose the detail. Um, just really using these uh, products, you can really, you can really make a whole lot. Um, as I was telling you guys with Lumiere's face, I'll be painting it white just to make sure that it's completely covered. And then I'll be using a pigment, pa pigment paste on top of him so that he has a shimmer, he kind of glows. Um, just like I did this little card. Don't know if you guys can see. It shimmers, it's just hard to see um, over the camera, but these paste, the pigment powders um, and the inks are really um, some of the best products that you can actually use on any kind of clay or clay work that you do. Um, just knowing how to use them. Uh, the powders, they're better when you use them with raw clay. Uh, inks and paste are with clay that's already been baked. So you guys can really use your creativity and make whatever you guys want. Um, if you guys decided to do a floral, um, you guys could completely uh, put it on a 3D tumbler and make it all flowers and then just go ahead and and paint them in in a way that they look faded that the colors don't look like paint would look splotchy these just look faded and with a really pretty shimmer let me see if you guys have any questions
I'm so happy you made it, Mandy. I'm so, so, so happy. Happy anniversary, by the way. <laughs> um, do you guys have any questions? Is there anything that you guys would like to see? I can always come back and once he's baked, I could always come back and we can do his face um, so that you guys can see how I actually use the pigment, the pigment paste on his face and all the detailing. Um, he actually is still missing his two little candles over here, but I'll have to bake them first and then I'll be adding those little candle hands that he has. <laughs> No, I, I was so honored to be here and um, I'll be popping in and making little lives like this so that you guys can see um, just a different way to use uh, the NMO products that um, and you guys kind of get a feel for 3D art. I hope you guys enjoyed it and um, and that you guys actually try it. Go ahead and get some clay. You saw how easy I did it with just a little piece of clay and the mold. And um, you guys get to have some fun with all your pigment powders. <laughs> if you guys have any questions at all, you guys can always follow me at Dark Arts Craftopedia and um, shoot me a, a message. It doesn't matter if it's on Instagram, on TikTok, or on Facebook. Um, you guys can always ask any kinds of questions. And if you guys decide that you guys like um, that you guys like uh, 3D art and you would like to join, we have a group, and it's called Dimensional Artist, um, where I show how to sculpt and how to use all of the all of the products. It was a pleasure to be here. <laughs> Thank you all for joining me. Bye.